Hello and welcome visual learners, Red Panda here. I would like to show you a small video tutorial on how to use the creation kit. Uh, more specifically I want to show you how to use the height map editor and the, a little bit of world, world creation. Um, I had done quite a bit of research and uh, playing around trying to figure out how to use this tool and I really didn't find much resources on the internet on, uh, on how to do world creation. Um, there's a couple tutorials out there on YouTube. Uh, pretty, uh, there, there's not a lot there. I mean, it kind of gives you a basic overview view, but uh, not real in depth. So I thought I would show you what I've learned through lots of trial and error, and a um, little bit of, of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, go ahead and get your file and your data. Get your Skyrim ESM loaded up. Hit OK. It's going to take a while um, if you've never done that before. A little window will open up and uh, you'll have to hit yes to all. Uh, some, that pretty much happens every time. It's a little warning. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem. So once you've got all that loaded up, go up to World and World Spaces. And we're actually going to create our own World Space. In here you can see all the World Spaces that make up Skyrim. Tamriel being the largest of them. Um, you'll also notice that Tamriel does not have a parent world space. That is because it is the parent world space to pretty much all the rest of these. So Salvangar, Riften, they all use Tamriel as a parent world space. We're going to create our own completely separate world space. So to do that, you right click anywhere over here. It'll give you a little dialog, say new, and then give it an idea. Uh, an ID. I generally name mine test. Once you've done that, um, give it a name. I'm just going to name mine test world. Make it simple. Now, from there, there's a few options we need to change. Um, I changed my LOD water height and my default water height to zero. Uh, Tamriel uses this large, um, or very small, minus uh, 14,000 for the w water height. Um, I don't understand that. It doesn't quite work to my brain, and for all of my testing, using zero um, is fine. It works just just fine that way. So this is what I do. Do whatever you feel like. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to be making an island. So I'm actually going to make this minus 500. That will actually put our default land height below our water height, meaning that we'll have a very large ocean that we can work with, and then we can raise the land up from there. Uh, after you do that, go down to Climate and hit Skyrim. That'll just make things look a little bit nicer in-game. Um, you won't have a stark gray sky. You'll actually have the normal Skyrim climate with clouds and rain cycles, things like that. Um, don't worry about the rest of these. Just come down, make sure this small world uh, box is checked. And then once you've done that, you can not actually get to the OK button. So you're just going to have to click in any one of these boxes and hit enter. That will uh, set your changes and you'll be fine to go from there. Uh, now we can go to cell view and world space. We're actually going to select the world space that we just created. This test world space that I made. And we, are, we come up with this wilderness cell. It, it only comes up with one cell to start. If you double click on it, you'll get a whole bunch more cells. And then you can see your brand new world as flat as can be in here. Um, you'll also notice that we have water above us. So if I scroll out with my mouse wheel a little bit, you can see that we have water sitting above our land. So I'm scrolling out, you can see the water, scroll back in, we've got the land underneath it. So that's exactly what I wanted. Um, next step is come up to File and hit Save. And I'm actually going to save this as uh, I just save it as test just to make it simple. Um, I already have one made, so I'm just going to overwrite it. And now at this point, we're going to do something a little bit strange. I'm actually going to close down the entire creation kit and load it back up, get my Skyrim ESM loaded and my test uh, ESP loaded up. Um, so I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and loaded up my Skyrim creation kit um, by going to File, Data, uh, double left click on the Skyrim master file and double right click on my test ESP file. Uh, hit OK and then wait for it to load up. 
Now the reason for that, if I come into my world space, go back to my test, um, you'll notice that all those cells that we created are, are now gone. Um, we saved this file out, so you would think that these would be here, but they're not. Um, so that comes into play for uh, for something a little bit later with the height map. Um, so go ahead and double click on this wilderness again, get all of those wilderness cells back up, and now you have this um, test world space is now active. And that's important for the height map editor to work. Um, I found out with my testing. So let's go ahead and jump into the height map editor so that we can actually get something in here. Um, so to do that, we're going to go to world and height map editing. Or to make things a little bit faster, you can hit this little button right here. It's the height map editor. Just go ahead and hit that. You get a dialog asking you which world space you want to height map edit. So go to test and hit OK. And here we go. This is the height map editor. Um, you can open up other world spaces and kind of see how things work in those ones. Um, but I'll just give you a quick overview of how this works. Uh, the the bigger uh, box in here is actually the entire uh, world space. This is as big as Skyrim is. So if you fill this whole thing up with landscape, you would you would have a, a file as big as as Tamriel. Um, for our purposes, we don't need it to be that big. Um, don't really want it to be that big. Um, if you look at this smaller box in the middle, um, I'm actually just scrolling using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And if you want to pan, you click down on the mouse wheel, and you can scroll around a bit. So this square in the middle is actually um, those cells that we loaded up over here, which I want to mostly really get to. Um, these these wilderness cells make up the big square, and that is represented by this box right in here. Um, and I can show you that a little bit easier by hitting the grid button, so we can see the grid. That actually shows us all the cells that make up our world space. Um, if you're unfamiliar with how big a cell is, if you think of Riverwood, Riverwood would probably take up um, maybe four, four cells, uh, three and a half cells, something like that. Uh, so th this is actually a pretty big area here. Um, and that's what's nice about the height map editor is we can edit a very large area very quickly that would take a very long time to do if we were trying to do it with the landscape editor. So to get started, I'll show you a couple of these tools that we have. Uh, we have this eyedropper tool and the brush tool. I use both of these. And then we have the land down tool and the land up tool. Those are pretty much the only tools I use. Um, I haven't played around with the other ones yet, so maybe I'll show you how to use those in another tutorial if I learn how to use them. But anyway, <coughs> looks like we got uh, a couple selection tools if you wanted to select some land and copy and paste it somewhere else or just move it. But uh, like I said, I don't know how to use those. So for the selector or the eyedropper, you're able to come in here with this crosshairs and pick this, uh, this color that's right here. This color means that we are at uh, minus 500 points below sea level. Um, out here, it's going to be lower than that. I'm not sure what that is, how, how deep that is. But uh, now that we have this selected, we're able to take the paintbrush tool and I'll probably size it up just a little bit so I can get a little bit bigger land space. Now, by clicking and dragging, you are able to paint with that color right over the top of anything. So this is this is very helpful if you want to very quickly make a area of land uh, a specific height. So I'm actually just going to do this just so we have kind of a round area that's uh, 500 points below sea level and then we'll put our island within this round. So now we want to pull our, our island up out of the water. So I'm going to grab my land up tool and I'm going to click and drag just right in the middle here just to bring up a little bit of land. Now that right there is just a a little bit above sea level. Um, I know that by trial and error, um, when you're 500 points below sea level, um, this color is now above it. So now that we have that, I'm actually going to grab that eyedropper again, and I'm going to select actually one of these darker colors because I don't want it quite this high above sea level. I want it somewhere in here. So I'm going to click on that, grab my brush tool, come back out, probably drop this down to say 15. And now I'm going to paint out 
what I want my island to look like. So I'm just going to do something real quick just to make it look something like an island. Go ahead and fill in the middle. So now at this point we have uh, out here we have water five, minus 500 below sea level and then we have land above water. So this will look like a perfect little island that we can uh, link to from Tamriel and be able to do all kinds of fun stuff with. And if we turn that grid back on, you can see that it's a pretty big island. Uh, Riverwood would fit right in the middle of it, no problem. Now that we have that done, I'm going to go back to my raised land. Actually, I'll go to the, the lower land uh, brush. And I think I'd like to bring a little inlet into here. So I'm just going to click and drag in here and push this land back down into the water so that we have kind of a bay, a cove, whatever else you want to call it. So right now I'm just kind of showing you how you can use this um, the high map editor to make a very large uh, area of land pretty quickly. And uh, this is all just going to be really um, create creative going on right here. I'm just raising and lowering the land, kind of deciding where I want mountains and hills. Um, I'd like a little bit of a taller mountain over here. Make it kind of fall off back into the land. I don't want it to be too tall. Just clicking and dragging. Um, you'll change your your settings over here, size and intensity. Um, this is where I like it for painting, just so it doesn't paint too fast. Um, with the intensity being down to 50, you bring it up too high, and then you paint, and it just well, it turns into red, and that's a really, really tall mountain. You, there's no way you'd be able to climb that or anything. It's just way too tall. Um, unfortunately, in the high map editor, you're not able to, uh, like, say, Control Z to get rid of that change. You, the only thing you can do is really come in, grab a color, use the paintbrush as, as an eraser tool, pretty much. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go through, I did it again, didn't change my settings. Um, I'm just going to go through and give myself a little bit of, a little bit of interest into my, my world space. I'm just going to kind of push down the land a little bit, make this a little bit bigger. Push that down a little bit faster. Uh, maybe make this inlet a little bit more of a, of a beach as opposed to really cliffy. Just to help this be not too too high up out of the water, so it's looking pretty good. Grab my other. Uh, I think I might like actually to have this be. Let me do it. Let me change. It's way too big. Okay. Intensity fifty. There we go. Now I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a, of a rise right here. Maybe I can put a lighthouse up there. And do a little bit of a, uh, a ridge along this shoreline over here that you kind of walk up to. Different things like that. Uh, just kind of a little bit of a hilly area right up here. Goes up and down. And bring that this you kind of have to walk around it. So anyway, you can just really get creative and have a lot of fun with this. And this is looking like a pretty good island already um, that we can very quickly start making other changes to as we get into uh, go back and do some landscape editing. Bring this mountain up a little bit more. Alright, now I'm going to be done with this. Um, now this is where having this um, test file active out here comes into play. If that was not active and I hit the save button, um, my Skyrim crashes. So having that active, I figured out you can hit the save button and it comes up with this little file in use box and then it just starts waiting for the file to not be in use anymore. Um, so this gives us an opportunity to hit enter and cancel that that it's trying to save, but it still does all the work that it's supposed to, changing the cells, making the landscape higher or lower. So once that's done, you hit cancel, 
uh, hit enter on cancel as many times as it needs to to be able to close the high map editor, get into here, and now you can see that all these different cells have actually been have, have been changed. Uh, any cell that has a little asterisk next to it means that you've edited that. So, and we actually have a whole lot more cells in here than, than we did. So we can go ahead and double click on one of these. Sometimes it takes a couple times if this warning comes up, just like yes to all. There we go. And now I can back up a little bit and pan around. And there we go. We've got a rather large island with the bay in the middle and everything all set up really fast. Um, if I, you know, that, that only took a couple minutes. Whereas if you tried to do this, um, with the, et the the landscape editor, it did take quite a while. So there we go. It's pretty nice. Um, you will notice wherever there is a cell border, you'll get these little creases. Um, fortunately, it's really easy to fix. So not a big deal. And uh, I'm going to leave that for the next tutorial. I'll show you how to uh, fix that. And we'll just start cleaning this up and uh, start adding some objects to make it look a little bit more like an island as opposed to just ground. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.